Moulander, this is Moulander EDC now. Yeah, this is a bit different, isn't it? Certainly not in the kingdom of the Moorlands anymore. Nope, not in DD. So, I passed over the border from the kingdom of the Moorlands into England about an hour ago. Uh, we're heading north, we've just crossed the Yorkshire Moors, still driving through the Yorkshire Moors really, uh, to the beautiful city of York. Um, I think this is probably, well this is definitely going to be a little bit different to usual, um, the, the fact that I'm in a car. Uh, so this, yeah, this definitely is, but I think this is probably going to be something more like a, a vloggy style thing. I've never done a vloggy style thing, apart from once when I went to do uh, the world's fastest zip line. I'll leave a link here. Um, yeah, so there's uh, there's a nice story behind this. So, uh, it's, I'll try and keep it reasonably short, but this is something that I've wanted to do for a long, long, long time. Um, I, I know a few of you, uh, if you've tuned into some of the pieces of content that I've done about mental health in the past, and even some other pieces of content I've, I've, I've mentioned in there, I, I strongly believe that talking about mental health is, is the best way to help people around you to, to be able to open up and talk about it themselves. Uh, back in 2018, I had some, some real struggles and there, there were some really dark times that I'm, I'm glad that I'm out of, but it was, yeah, it was really, really, really hard to the point where my depression was pretty debil debilitating. I, I, I just couldn't function, couldn't function at all. I'd spend days, weeks just in bed. Couldn't move, couldn't talk, uh, just, just couldn't function as a human being and my wife uh, Mrs. Moreland uh, she'd, she'd go to work hoping to come home and you know, find me still there um, and one of the things that she'd do is she knew full well that I was a big fan of certain YouTube channels so she turned my phone on, plug my phone into the mains and just leave the phone in my hand it's, it's all that would get me through the day um, just staring at my phone, trying not to think of the hard, just the horrible, horrible thoughts in my head. Um, the different things that I used to—I mean, I, I still love watching. So I love, I love gun channels like Grand Thumb, like Demolition Ranch, Kentucky Ballistics, uh, Twenty Two Plinkster, like ED, EDC channels, um, like Accessorize Me. Um, George Defines, um, and even some, uh, some um, what's it, channels, airsoft channels like Novridge, Stay, Sh Stay Fresh Shoes, all of those sort of things, and there were quite a lot, other, lot of other channels that, it was like ASMR, I hope I got the, those letters the right way around, and it still is, so Friday night's my YouTube night, where I sit at home, finish work, grab some beers, get a pizza and just just watch some stuff to unwind from the week and, and one of my ASMR style pieces of content is and I, I, I just love is knife building or knife making. Absolutely fascinated by it. Whether it's uh, people like Green Beetle that go into making all of the different types of metal, canister, Damascus, all of that sort of stuff, to some UK oddballs like Dies in Every Film that, yeah, he's just a cracking guy that just likes Deadpool. But anyway, so all of that sort of stuff really got me through some some difficult times, and I think that having a having a positive distraction and I, yeah, I think that's the best way to put it is, is, a, is a good thing so fast forward four years the company that I'm working for the studio that I'm in I work in a creative studio in the medcoms industry they have a thing called a personal development fund which they believe in making sure that all of their staff 
um, are enriched by training themselves in whichever field that they're in. We have medical writers, we have faculty, uh, we have like in the creative team where I am in the studio. There's you know lots of different creative departments, um, but. Your personal development fund is completely down to you, how you use it. So I could have gone on some Photoshop or some Illustrator training, but then I could have used the money to learn how to make a knife. And that is what we're gonna do this weekend. Something that I've wanted to do for such a long time. And it's really cool, and I, yeah, I, I, in some respects, you know, I am hashtag blessed that I work for an amazing company that have this scheme to help to enrich their employees. Um, so yeah, we're gonna make some sharp things. Through social media, through uh, through Instagram, one of the one of the cool, absolutely amazing fellas that I follow is Luke from um, York Knives. That's where we're going to go today. I don't know how I'm going to do this. I, I think it probably is going to be a vloggy thing. You know, it's just me talking. I, I, you know, I like to talk. Um, so yeah, hopefully it's going to be fun. I hope it's going to be fun. I don't think I'm going to be able to take you through the whole process because it's a two-day thing. It's quite an intensive course. I'm, I'm not going to come out at the end of this a skilled knife creator, uh, mainly because it is just a two-day intensive course. It's one-on-one. -on -one. He, he shows you exactly how to do it. I'll come out at the end with a knife, but I know the amount of time and the amount of different things that we'll need to do over two days will probably be quite a lot. And I certainly don't want to slow down the process by me going, oh, I need to move the camera and I need to do this and I need to change that and, oh, can I just check my battery? Because I don't know how long or what extra time that will take. Um, so I, I think I'll try and put in some footage now but whilst that footage is on here maybe I'll call I'll stop at the end of the day because I'm, I'm I've got some digs up here give a bit of an update then do a day two kind of thing so yeah okay so first let's go day on an adventure done. and let's Back make some sharp stuff how's that I feel like I'm in some sort of mid-90s porn set but all very cool. Now, I've totally realised that I've left my recording equipment back at, um, you know, where I've been recording today. So, hopefully, you can see my face and you can hear me okay. If the audio quality is a bit weird, I do apologise about that. I probably, yeah, a bit of foresight. Anyway, so, first things first, without saying anything more, I have to say... Northern Hospitality, Luke, uh, York Knives, he is my G, honestly, absolute legend. Uh, yeah, Northern Hospitality, British Hospitality, I mean, Kingdom of the Moorlands Hospitality is, it's the best, but you go into England, the rest of the UK, you know, it, it really is amazing and he's an absolute legend. First day, we've done lots. We've decided, our first thing we decided was the steel. Did I want to go carbon steel or did I want to go um, stainless steel? Do some blanks. Decided on the knife. There's probably about maybe a dozen, maybe more different styles in which, you know, I, I, could, I could choose from and slightly alter if, if you know, if I wanted to. Um, then scales, all of that sort of stuff. So we, we scribed out the knife cut bits out and you, you, hopefully this this all makes sense for what I'm seeing here but if, if it's not in the order in which I'm saying it then you know sorry about that but um, yeah there's a lot to take in today it's a very very intensive course because it's two days to make a knife and we're not just talking just a, a, a nice knife that you might go yeah my first knife it was nice we're talking really nice stuff it is one-on-one -on -one, uh, tuition on how to how to make a knife so we cut that out uh, we got the kiln fired um, we didn't need temper. It didn't need annealing because uh, so Luke uses 
uh, knife stock from ground stock ground flat stock which is another northern company um, so it's already annealed it's ready you can literally just start to cut it and then you can uh, you can heat treat it and stuff afterwards so we did the initial heat treat we've also gone through two tempering cycles which is just kind of finishing off now uh, but in the meantime we've worked on the scales we've attached the liners to the scales and we've, we've started uh, to cut them out and, and to, to, to put some sort of shape on there especially around the edge which we won't be able to work on afterwards once we've got those attached I've gone through different fixture methods um, yeah there's been a lot today and I even had my first go at grinding now we we did uh, hand grinding at first damn that is scary your fingers are so close to this grit that could take you down to the bone within seconds it's very daunting um, so I had a little bit of go about that take it putting the first bevels in but then we got onto the jig and how to use it I've seen loads of people using jigs and I assumed that they would just slide across but with the water on there it creates a lot of friction which I had to get used to so I've I've tried a few different styles I think I've got it right Luke seemed really happy with what I've done but what really done it was we've done today is make sure that everything is prepared so that tomorrow we can hit the ground running I've started to practice some grinds on some other knives whereas tomorrow I'll be you know putting the grind the bevels and the grind onto my knife so yeah really looking for day for today too now I've just got back I'm pretty tired I could do with a shower I, I could do the poo actually as well so I'll go and do that now and then yeah we'll catch up tomorrow morning
Now it's been a few days since actually making this and I thought what to do is actually show you the knife itself. This is stunning. Now whilst I'm talking about this, I'm just going to show you around it. But yeah, this is such a stunning knife. So here we have it in all its splendid glory. Custom made Kydex sheath. Um, obviously you need to make sure the, these are made afterwards because every knife is completely individual. Luke doesn't have, you know, a, like a big stock of these. Um, they're all made for the knife that you, that you make yourself. And in fact, you make your own sheath. Has this absolutely beautiful um, leather wrap which doubles on the back, hand stitched by myself, uh, sewn in, all of that sort of stuff um, by me. So it has a, a leather loop on there so that you can hold it. And really nice kind of push forward. Just put that down for a second. And there you go, here is the knife. Now just to state, this is a perfectly legal UK knife. This is used by responsible adults and uh, it, it's really for bushcraft. Um, but this is not an illegal knife uh, but here you can see so I went for the uh, higher grind on this went for a saber grind rather than um, rather than a scandy grind but didn't go too far up there mate so it, it helped to uh, help to reinforce the strength behind here on the swedge there you can see it says York knives um, to personalize this it also says on the back, Morlander EDC, established 2018. Now, there is extra personalization on this. Normally, Luke's knives um, say on the bottom, they usually say made in Yorkshire, but as this is returning to the Kingdom of the Morelands, you can say on there, it says Kingdom of the Morelands. On the top, we've got the um, steel that it's made from. These really beautiful spalted beef, uh, spalted beef, <laughs> spalted birch, um, stabilized um, scales, and went for the orange G10 liner, uh, and then yeah, we uh, we threw that on the end. But that is absolutely gorgeous. Hand ground by myself. This knife is 99. Well, let's say 97.3% made by me. Uh, so Luke, what he'll do is he'll, as you can probably see in the videos, he'll, he'll have started some of the grinds off just to show me. Um, but it, it's all part of the process. You spend some time grinding on some other knives so that you can get it just right. And yeah, there you go. Absolutely gorgeous. Now, I really can say that this has been one of the most amazing experiences that I've had. One, because I've, I've been able to make something that I've wanted to do for so long. I watch so much knife making content. It, it really has been a great experience to be able to do that. Two, being able to travel up to Scarborough. It's a, it's a beautiful part of the country. The most important part of this, though, is number three, and that's Luke and York Knives welcomed as a friend that I'd not seen in 20 years, just walked through the door and just from the get-go was made to feel welcome and we just chatted. It was brilliant. Two dudes just talking about stuff, shooting, shooting the breeze, chewing the fat. Yeah, it was, he's a great guy, absolutely personable person. You turn up and just you just yeah you just feel welcome and I think that's part of the experience for me that I enjoyed as a man just kind of being there and just yeah in, enjoying the whole experience Luke made me feel incredibly welcome now wearing my York knives merch yeah you better believe he's got the merch thing going on I wholeheartedly recommend checking out York knives on YouTube Instagram Facebook wherever you can find Luke and York Knives and, and having a look at the amazing stuff that he's doing. I'll leave all of the links below. I'll leave some of my social media links below as well. But for now, stay safe, stay Morelander and stay EDC. And then if you want to know a little bit more about me, the Randy side of Moreland and EDC, not Randy as in the fact that I'm sort of some sort of pervert, but Randy is my, my name what I choose to go by, it's how I identify. Uh, yeah, I've worked in Metcoms now for 
How long are we going to make comms? Six? No, yeah, no. I don't know. How long have we worked in medcoms? I've worked in medcoms now for about seven or eight years. And I love it, absolutely love it. I never I didn't I didn't even realise it was a thing. So I I worked in graphic design for quite a while, since 2006, 2007. And yeah, I just never realised that medcoms was a thing. I got in somebody got in touch, ended up moving into it. So medcoms really, I suppose it's it's, it's actually marketing. So uh, all of your pharmaceutical industry style, your big farmers, AstraZeneca, GSK, uh, Roche, Nova Nordisk, yeah, all, all those, all the kind of the big names. They have marketing teams that help them to do stuff, but it's it, it's not really marketing in the style of Mad Men style marketing because you, you know you, you're restricted in a lot of stuff that you can do, especially with pharmaceuticals. But I work in a studio team and we help pharmaceutical companies to to make creative stuff. And it, it, it's quite varied, which is why I love it so much. So one day I could be working with a, a, a pharmaceutical company. They've got this medical symposium in Stockholm and they need some PowerPoint slides. So I'll, I'll help them to create a theme for them, put in lots of different stuff. I mean, they have medical writers. I'm, I'm, I, I studied human biology at college, but you know, I, I certainly don't have a doctorate, and I, I'm certainly not that clever. Um, but yeah, so I'll, I'll help. I'll, I'll work with these doctors. I'll work with medical writers to to help to bring these powerpoints together, so that they can use these for training for doctors, international doctors from the medical community all around the world. The next day, I could be helping to redraw medical figures which are things like, well, yeah, just kind of medical figures. <laughs> I don't know what else to put it. Um, medical figures can be charts. Uh, quite a popular one is called the Kaplan-Meier chart, which unfortunately illustrates the, the decline in a patient from when they start taking a treatment to unfortunately to the point where they die, uh, often referred to as a death graph which isn't particularly nice but then there's other stuff that I really enjoy doing so there's days when someone will say hey Randy we need to illustrate some poo uh, there is a thing out there called the Bristol stool scale I spent a week drawing this redrawing the, the seven different types of poo on the Bristol stool scale that was all I mean that was a good fun spent I mean this is I, the, the, I suppose on the funny side um, I often joke with people that I'm a professional dick drawer. I just get paid to draw dicks all day because uh, my friends found it quite funny once because, yeah, uh, Randy, there's another job coming. We need to, you to draw some cock. Not any particularly nice cock, just this really manky knob rot cock. Uh, thank you very much. Here's some pictures to use as reference. So yeah, my friends think I just draw dicks all day, which I mean in fairness, I do. But I love it. Like I say, I absolutely love it because there's so many varied things. Um, I like to feel in a job that I'm also giving back. And as I say, I'm not a doctor. I've not studied to be a doctor, I'm, I'm not at the forefront like a lot of the healthcare professionals out there actually saving lives, but I like to think in a small little way, if they've seen a diagram in the British Medical Journal or the New England Medical Journal or whichever medical journal, something that a piece of my work been, has been published in, I like to think in a small way that I have helped that patient. Uh, that doctor has become educated by something that I've produced. I've helped 
another doctor or I've helped a, a faculty member to illustrate that so that they can see it, they can understand it, and it, it, it's helped that patient. And that, in a way, for me, is that that's that, that's how I feel kind of fulfillment from my job and the fact that, yeah, I, I get to help these, help these people. Also, which is a really nice thing, I get this PDF, but I also get to travel quite a bit with work. So, I, as I just mentioned before, let's say there is a, it's EASD and it's in Stockholm, which I think EASD this year in 2022 is in Stockholm. Um, I've in not been mile, able to go, oh, we've got a person talking. I've not been able to go this year, but I often, I'm often allowed to travel with work to these different places, so um, that's always a cool thing. But yeah, that, that's, a, that's a little snippet of Randy's life outside of, uh, of Norland at EDC.